Hi guys, my name is Siwa Elfink and in today's video I'm going to show you how I created an advanced road detection system using machine learning. I am also going to show you how I used an end-to-end -end drive model to predict desired steering angles and total values according to my own driving behavior which I learned through the AI model using a technique called behavioral cloning. All of this is done by using Python and you can make it yourself at home using the open source code in the description down below. So let's get started. This video is actually part of a 3 series videos which I'm going to post on my YouTube channel. If you haven't seen part 1 then watch it here first before you watch this video so you understand what I'm going to make. I started by connecting the Xbox Kinect camera to my laptop and installing a library called libfreenect. This library will make me able to stream OpenCV images using the uh, Xbox Kinect camera as an input source. Here you can see a video of it working on, with on the left side the depth image and on the right side you can see the RGB image coming from the camera. After having the camera working I continued with the processing unit which is a desktop PC with a GTX 1080, 16GB of RAM and an i7 processor which is definitely strong enough for an AI system. I first installed a fresh copy of Ubuntu on the computer. After that I installed the CUDA toolkit from NVIDIA which is needed to accelerate our AI system with the NVIDIA GPU which is inside the computer. I also installed all the other necessary packages like OpenCV and NumPy. Now that I got all the necessary packages installed it was time to get started with developing the system itself. I first downloaded the segmentation model made by NVIDIA from GitHub. After fixing some errors, I was able to run the model on an image with a section of a road in it. Here you can see why I'm going to use this model because it can very clearly detect where the road is and where the edge of the road is. It was able to do this because it was trained on the city skyscapes dataset which has a lot of roads in the dataset. After this successful test, I made a program which can run this model on a video in real time. After having the model working, I needed to find a way to get the coordinates of the sides of the roads. This is not given by the segmentation model. I made an algorithm which scans the segmented image and looks which color the pixel and previous pixel has. If the previous color is not purple and the next color is purple, the pixel is the left side of the road. If it is the other way around, the pixel is on the right side of the road. I save the coordinates of all these pixels and draw them to the image. Here you can see the first result I got. As you can see, it did not work right well. So I continued programming and made it real time. I fixed some bugs and it already started working better. Eventually, it worked really well. Now that I got the coordinates of the side of the road, I can calculate the center of the road using these coordinates. This red line in the center will eventually be the path that the ATV drives. I continued further with improving the detection system by making it smoother using moving average filters and I also used a connected component filter on the segmented image to clean it up. While the center line detection improved a lot with these changes, it wouldn't always work, especially in cases where there was a side exit on the road, the red line would not be in the center. Also in cases where the segmented image was bad, the center line would move randomly. To make the ATV drive reliable, I needed to come up with a more robust solution. That is when I realized I needed some AI magic. I discovered a GitHub repo named Donkey Car, which has an AI model which takes care of all these issues by making the AI model do everything, instead of detecting the road and drawing a center line manually and generating steering angles and throttle values to follow this center line, a end-to-end -end drive model is used which gets an image as input and gives the correct steering angles 
and throttle values all by itself. This model is able to do this by using a technique developed by Nvidia. I guess all that money they made by selling graphics cards to Bitcoin miners is being spent very well. This technique uses a convolutional neural network to learn complex features of the world and match these with correct steering angles and throttle values. But how does the AI know what values are correct? This is where behavioral cloning and humans come into play. I am going to show the AI model what values are correct by driving the ATV myself manually over the road. During the driving, I save the current image from the camera and also save the corresponding steering angle and throttle value for that image. This data is then trained on the AI model so that it can learn the relation between the road features and these throttle and steering values. So now we know what to make, it is time to get started with the AI part. Because Donkey Car is made for RC cars on small tracks and not for large vehicles on public roads, I can just copy paste their code. I can use some parts of it, but I have to write some parts myself. In this image you can see the different parts of the AI system. I am going to start with the image processing module. Donkey Car just feeds the raw image from the camera into the AI model. This works fine when there are clear white road markings in the image, but I suspect it would not work very well when there are no clear road features like road markings, which is the case on the road at my house. Instead, I'm going to first segment the image using the NVIDIA segmentation model I used earlier. Then I'm going to give the pixels that represent the three classes that are the most important to me very bright colors. I give them bright colors because the model just takes RGB values as input. If I give them a color which has a high RGB value, the model will get more excited at those pixels. I give road pixels the color white because white is the highest RGB color possible and I give plants the color green and I give dirt and grass the color blue. All the other classes which are not important to me are given the color black because that is the lowest RGB value possible. This will make the AI model only focus on those three classes which will make it easier for the AI to learn important features. Using this technique it for example would not be able to learn a false connection between a road sign and steering left. After the image processing is done, it is time to work on saving the data from the steering and throttle sensors. I already made a program which can read out these sensors in part 1 of this video series. I am going to store these values using the TUP system from Donkey Car. This is because I want to use Donkey Car's training script to train the AI model because this is a very complex script. Because the script was written to use the TUP system as input, I need to save my data using the TUP system. Here you can see me testing that the video is running and reading the steering and throttle sensors. Here you can also see that the images are being saved and that the throttle and steering values are also saved in JSON files according to the TUP system. After that, I trained an AI model on the TUP system I made and it trained very well. Now it is time to work on the module which loads in the AI model and feeds the model the camera image and returns the correct steering and throttle values. Here you can see the first time I got it working where the AI is predicting steering and throttle values according to the video. You can see that the AI model is predicting the values very randomly and also the values are outside of the range that they should be, which is between minus 1 and 1. After a lot of searching, I figured out this is because the image was not normalized before feeding it into the AI. After normalizing the image, the module worked very well. Now that I have the throttle value and steering value from the AI model, I have to make sure that the ATV actually steers the AI predicted angle and throttle. Because steering and throttle are not instant, but take some time, I'm going to implement a peer controller. This controller will run in a separate thread and will make sure that the steering system and throttle will always be in the values that the AI wants them to be. Here you can see 
the entire system working for the first time on a real video with a real trained AI model. After that, the P gain of the control system needed to be tuned. I did this by making the quad steer from right to left and then tune the p-value until the steering action performed as I wanted. Now it was time to work on the last part, which is the module, which uses the depth camera from the Xbox Kinect to adjust the throttle value so that the ATV does not hit any objects that are close by. After some programming it worked as you can see here. But there is one big issue. This is actually the exact same issue I had with the other ATV I built two years ago. When I moved the ATV into bright sunlight, the Xbox Kinect can't detect the depth anymore. This is because the Xbox Kinect depth camera projects an infrared pattern to calculate the distance. But because the sun also has infrared light, it messes with the Xbox Kinect pattern, making it useless outdoors. Here you can see it working, but as you can see, this was during the evening. I gave up on the obstacle avoidance for now and continued with the next part, which is actually to train the AI model on my driving behavior. To do this, I started with gathering a lot of data. And I really mean a lot. I drove the ATV around for about 5 hours gathering data. I used three different driving techniques while gathering data. The first was how the ATV should drive normally over the center line. The second was to drive small oscillations on the center line to make the AI learn to see the road from different angles. The last was to drive to the edges of the road and then stay back to the center again to learn the AI what the edges of the road are. I used a simple utility from Donkey Kart to visualize the dataset I collected. Here I found out that the data was not distributed well. The purple graph is how it should look and the blue graph is my data. You can see that the data is biased to the right. This was because I apparently steered more to the right in my training data than to the left while the roads at my house are mostly straight. So it should be about even. Because it was not about even, I removed some faulty data and I got the graph looking pretty nice as you can see right here. After running the model on a pre-recorded video, I saw that the output of the AI model was not smooth at all. It kept giving a messy output, left and right, while it should drive about straight. When looking at the image being fed into the AI, you can see that it's also really messy. This is why I decided to use some OpenCV functions to clean up the image at the cost of some detail. Now the AI gave a much cleaner result but it steered really aggressively to the left and right. This was much too aggressive and I needed to figure out why it did this. It turned out to be my fault. I learned the AI model to steer so aggressively. Remember how I said that I needed to drive to the edges of the road to learn the AI model the edges of the road. I apparently did this too aggressively so that the AI model also learned to do this very aggressive. So instead of driving like this, I needed to drive to the road edges but with much smaller oscillations like this. Now that everything was programmed and tested and I made our robust AI model, it was time to test it all for real. And of course it worked great the first time. Well actually not, I had a lot of things go wrong from driving off the road at low speed to randomly steering full to one direction to driving into a fence at high speed to sunlight being an issue and much more random problems. I actually made a system which saves the video from the camera, the video which the AI sees and writes the commands from the steering and throttle controller to a text file. I could then after testing review this data to figure out what was wrong and fix it for the next testing session. A couple tweaks I did were to first of all fix the tires. 
that are constantly leaking air because they were not made for a heavy load. I put some better tires on which I had laying around from another ATV. I also mounted the steering sensor in a better way. The sensor kept drifting which made the ATV think the steering system was straight while it actually was steering to the right. And I also did some more training runs with the new tweaks to make the AI give some better predictions for its steering. In this video I programmed an AI system which uses an end-to-end -end drive model to drive an ATV over the public road at my house. And it drives really well. The code I made can be found in the description below and is completely free. You can do whatever you want with it. I have a lot of demo videos with the ATV working in different scenarios which I am going to show you in part 3 of this video series. In part 3 I am also going to discuss what I will improve for our version 2.0 of this autonomous system to make the ATV drive even better and faster. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel and I see you in the next one.